All right, well, uh, Mark Cuban, the billionaire entrepreneur, Dallas Mavericks owner, uh, he's saying that nobody in the 2020 race, that's 21 candidates strong right now, right now could beat Donald Trump. Why? He says they are all in the political class. Uh, Donald Trump is not. That's going to work against him to the president's favor. Let's ask Independent Women's Forum's Beverly Hallberg. We've also got former White House press secretary, Fox News contributor Ari Fleischer, and Democratic strategist Emily Sussman. So, Beverly, uh, is it your view that uh, Mark Cuban is just trying to make a place for himself in a field, even, you know, running it as an independent, or is he stating um, the strong economy and everything else and that none of these men and women have a chance? Well, there's no doubt that Mark Cuban likes the spotlight, so I think he's testing the waters just a bit. But he does he's have a good point. He's waters. always testing yeah. the waters, and he loves controversy. So even saying that he may run as an independent, I think he loves to be um, on those headlines and people talking about him as somebody who could potentially upset the Democratic primary. But of course, I don't think we think of him as a solid candidate, even as an independent. But he does bring up a good point. The president does have good polling. The, his polling is very high even after the Mueller investigation concluded. And as you just mentioned, the economy is very strong. So I do think that when Democrats think that they have this in the bag, I think they need to keep looking at some of the numbers out there. Well, you know, Harry Fleischer, I'm looking at the president's poll numbers, and they're better than they were, I grant you that. But, but let's face it, I mean, with an economy this strong, I know the markets are volatile, but they have been incredibly strong. You could make an argument that he should be up 10 points in the polls, and he's not. So... Who says that these, these Democratic challenges are going nowhere? Yeah, I think Mark Cuban's political analysis is faulty, frankly. I think Donald Trump very well might win this re-election, but I can also see a number of Democrats winning because the president's polling numbers are actually quite middling. His approval is about 45, and his disapproval is almost 10 points higher than that, 52, 53, 54. And so he's got to do even better than he's been doing polling-wise. And it depends on who the Democratic nominee is. If it's Bernie Sanders, I'm pretty sure Donald Trump will win. If it's Joe Biden, then I think you actually might have a really fair fight where this is going to be a very closely contested presidential race. Emily Sussman, what do you think of that? If it's Biden, you know, a good shot. Anyone else or most, maybe not. Yeah, look, the polling is showing that there's a lot of candidates when they go head to head with Trump will beat him on Cuban coming in. Look, I do think he's trying to make space for himself in the race, but I think that's because he just wants it to be about himself. The point, the actual point that I think is a fair one on his from his perspective is that there are a lot of people who thought that Trump was a successful businessman and that prosperity would somehow translate to their lives. They are not seeing that to begin with. And we're also learning more and more. What do you mean they're, not, you mean? they're not seeing that? I mean, they they're are seeing not, the good what, economy and record low unemployment, right? They're not seeing their wages going up. It's not matching with the economy. They're well, seeing they're, they're losing they're, their farms. It, it was, you were just doing right? a segment I mean, on their tariffs. So, so you would think you, you would argue the economy in this environment, and that that would be a good strategy for the Democrats? I actually do think it's a good strategy. All People right. are not seeing their wages going up in the way that they should, and they're nervous about what's going to come around the corner. Their health care well, costs I, are going I know up, political not getting lower. Their drug prices are going up. But you can't argue these numbers are what they are. Maybe that's a strategy that could work, Beverly. But I am wondering Look, whether the you saw the, the Trump polling numbers. Uh, okay. I, as I said, one of the reasons I think that could be, despite the economic improvement and other things the president does, like crazy tweets and all of that. But that's another issue. Beverly, I am curious, though, to kind of to Emily's point, whether the... the, the the candidate, the Democrats front should be more moderate in nature, not someone like a Bernie Sanders, not some of these uh, on the hard left who are advocating things that a lot of people will see fairly or not as big government run amok and socialism crazy. You, you know the drill. How, how do they play that? Well, I think it's difficult when it comes to the primary. I think running somebody who is a little bit more socialist might help in that that um, that race there. But when it comes to the general election, it's definitely going to have to be somebody that's more moderate. I think that's the reason why we're seeing Joe Biden do so well. He distances himself in some of the more extreme left positions. And I think that's why he is doing better, because polling shows that when it comes All to right. Democrat voters, 45 and above, socialism isn't what they want. All right, guys, I'm sorry to break away. Early. We've had